Welcome to Paper Threads Cutter Vision Tutorials. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use your Funtime Scrapbooking Deluxe 2010 software with the rhinestone features in it. And what we're going to go ahead and do is use the rhinestone features onto this shield shape, and we're going to do four different options of using the rhinestone feature. I inserted the shield onto my page from the shapes menu and I went ahead and made the shield four inches tall and then duplicated it four times so that we're using the same exact path line for each method. For the first method we'll go ahead and select the shield and then you need to go into the rhinestone menu. You can access the rhinestone menu down here by clicking the rhinestone icon or you can access it by going to tools and choosing rhinestones. Once you're in the rhinestone menu, you're going to go ahead and choose the different rhinestone size that you want to use. In this instance, we're going to use the 10 SS stone size or the 3 millimeter size. What you will notice is that the stone size in here is done in inches right here. And this is actually the physical stone size of the largest size on your marking. And what we need to do for our rhinestone pattern is we actually need our, our stone size cut to be a little bit larger than the stone size itself. This way the stones can easily fall into place when you rub them over the top of your pattern. So to do this we need to go ahead and change this stone size from 0.11 and we're going to change it to 0 0.13. And for the spacing, we want that spacing to be at least as large as the stone size plus the space size that we want in between each stone. So for this example, we're going to use a spacing of 0 0.18. And for this example, we're going to go ahead and erase the original path line when we're done. And we're going to keep the fill unchecked because all we want to do is do a rhinestone pattern around the outside line of the pattern or path. Once we've had all our settings done, we're going to go ahead and click apply. And you can see here we have a nice rhinestone pattern along the outside path of our pattern. So now we're going to go ahead and try out the fill technique. Click your next shield pattern and using the same stone size settings and spacing, this time we're going to go ahead and check the fill function in your menu which is located right here and then go ahead and click apply. And with that you can see that it filled in the rhinestones within the pattern, but when it did that we lost a little bit of the definition on the outside of the pattern where it may have curved up or something, and so we lost a little bit of definition on that. So to fix this or to try a different method, we're going to close out of the rhinestone menu and then select your next shield pattern. And to make this a little bit easier to visualize, we're going to go ahead and get out of our fill mode and go to wireframe mode where we can just see the path line itself. And in wireframe mode, we're going to go ahead and go to the tools menu and outline. With the outline selected, choose your thickness, which should be about the same size as your spacing. So we're going to use a 0 0.18 and change from outline to inline. So go ahead and select the inline and then unselect your outline. And then to accept this change, you want to go ahead and click the accept tool. Now with these two cut lines, you have an inline and you have your regular path line. The first thing we want to do is choose our inline path by clicking directly on that path. And you can see here that I've chosen just that path here. Then I want to go ahead and get out of my outline menu go back to my rhinestone menu and this time I'm going to fill this inside path line or inline using the same stone settings and spacings and with fill checked I'm going to go ahead and click apply. The next step to finish this off is to go ahead and select that outline path and this time instead of filling it we're just going to put the rhinestones around the path or fit them to the path so unselect your fill and click apply. So what I've basically done is I've taken this method, which is just an outline method, and I've taken the fill method, which fills in the design, and I've basically applied it in two different steps to that design to get this result. Our final test will be using some of the engraving fills. So we're going to go ahead and get out of our rhinestone menu, select our last shield here, go to your shape menu, engraving, and choose the inside and we're going to use a tool width of 0 0.18 which is the same measurements that we used for our spacing in the previous patterns and for our fill we need to go ahead and make sure that we choose the island fill there are three different options an s sweep a line and an island we want the island chosen and then go ahead and click ok 
And what you will see has happened is that the software has created an inline pattern all the way inside repeatedly until it got to the center of the design with the same spacing in between each path. You need to go ahead and select so that all of those path lines are selected including the outline. And then back in the rhinestone menu, again using the 10SS stone with our adjustments that we made previously, we want to go ahead and trace and fit a rhinestone to each path line along the shield. So we don't want the fill, we want the fill turned off and we want to go ahead and click apply. And what it has done is it's basically done this method, but because we had several lines in here, it applied it to every single line that we had selected on the interior of the shield. So what you can see here is on this one, it fills in with straight lines all the way across and just kind of cuts off on the outline. On this one, it kind of gives you a little bit more patterning in here, so you're not just getting some straight lines in your rhinestone but at the same time you're able to still keep that nice crisp outline effect that you get on this first method right here so you're retaining your shape um, where on this method you're losing your shape a little bit. To view these properly we're going to get out of the wireframe and go back to the regular fill mode and we can go ahead and change the fill color on those so that they are all the same color. You can select any color in your toolbar and just go ahead and left click and right click and that's going to change the fill and the stroke at the same time. What we can also see here is once we do that we can see that there are a few rhinestones that we might need to tweak, move, edit, etc. in order to make that pattern work well for us. We hope that you found this tutorial useful in using some of the options in the Funtime scrapbooking software to create your rhinestone patterns. Once again, thank you for watching Paper Threads Cutter Vision Tutorials. You can find this tutorial and other tutorials like this at our website at www.paperthreads.com forum.